Malaysia, situated in Southeast Asia, has a vision and is on track to achieving developed nation status by 2020. As such, there is a strong commitment to encourage overseas nationals to return and also to develop the skills of the next and future generations. In line with this policy, a school for developing and nurturing intellectually gifted children has recently been established. Just on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, lies the campus of UKM, University Kebangsan, Malaysia, where Permata Pintar, translated as National Brilliant Jewel, is based. Permata Pintar is being recognised in many parts of the world as a unique model for the accelerated learning of gifted children in preparation for early entry into leading universities throughout the world. Professor Datu Dr. Sharifa Hapsa, the Vice-Chancellor of UKM, is credited as being instrumental in the establishment of Permata Pintar. Permata Pintar is a, a program uh, for gifted and talented children. Gifted children are not gifted in everything. You know, some areas, they have to go like a normal school child. They are, maybe they're gifted in one area like arithmetic. Then they have to be challenged and given uh, more challenging tasks in, in math mathematics. But it doesn't mean you put them in a class with university students, for example. Because they have other needs, I, you know, like emotional needs, psychological needs, physical needs. Uh, and, you know, to be able to socialise with people in their own group, play and grow as a child. We talked about this with the First Lady, with uh, the Prime Minister's wife because uh, she has a keen interest in the development of children and she has this programme called Permata Negara which is about early childhood education and care. We said that it's not about one child, it's about many children in the country who are gifted and we should find uh, where they are. Uh, we'll develop a system for doing this and then we'll do a proper programme for them. So, Alhamdulillah, you know, we should look at the country as a whole and make sure we help all gifted children. Two years ago, when they first announced that Datin Sri Rosma is coming up with the idea after her visit to, if not mistaken, it's Thailand, after we, she visited the gifted school over there, she came up that she wanted to develop Malaysian gifted school. Before joining, my life was good, but I didn't feel challenged, like motivated because it was, all the studies was very easy for me, like everything, like tomorrow test, today I study or don't even study, I still can, I'm confident that I will score, but coming here, yeah, challenging. When I come here, it's like, it's different, I know that I can go different places, it's not just one, it's not just, oh, I do medic, I get this and I become a doctor, that's it. Here, Dr. Noria is giving me an opportunity to be a researcher, that's even better, even more interesting than just sitting in a clinic and dis dispensing medicines. One of the many unique aspects of Permata Pintar lies in the testing that is offered free to everyone regardless of their social status. There are three different testing stages that each student must pass in order to be accepted into the full-time residential programme. As the director of Permata Pintar, Associate Professor Dr. Noria has been instrumental in establishing this process. We decided to do it for free because uh, we wanted to reach as many children as possible. Promata Pinta's concept is no child is left behind, uh, every child is precious, so we make sure that each child will have the opportunity to do it. We have actually two uh, common tests that the students uh, would have to see before they are eligible to come for our school holiday camp. So the first test would be, we call it UCAM test one. The children can actually take the test from their home, at schools, uh, or anywhere that they have internet connections. Every year they have the, they call it UCAM one, the test. So from two, my teacher asked me to take the test online, but then I was too lazy to take it. So I did it only halfway. So that was the first time I heard about it. From three, then my father asked me to to take it again and that time I was quite serious so I pushed the whole thing, I did the whole test and at last uh, they invited me to go for the second test. Okay, The first exam was an uh, IQ exam which we set at our, our own home. We go to the website and there's an um, IQ exam, it's more similar to image IQ. 
So we complete that and after that, that's the UKM1 and after that, they, are, uh, they shortlist us and call us for the UKM2. When it comes to UKM2, it's a control test where we would actually have centres, uh, control centres and we have people who actually monitor the children. Second test is uh, more in-depth, they ask about more detailed questions and after that, September October, they give the confirmation letter to go to camp. It's the camp where, from the camp, they will choose to go into the school. We actually go down to their hometown, pick them up, bring them here. Those who need to fly, we send them flight ticket, it's everything free. And then we bring them here and they will be with us fully residential for three weeks. First, all of us was like, oh, three weeks away from home. Seriously, I took the course Invention. That was fun. That was so fun, <laughs> Invention. And then, while they are with us at the camp, we do the third test for the 15 years old. If they pass all those tests, then they are able to come to our school. There are two elements to the Permata Pinter program, the school holiday camp and the full-time residential program. With the assistance and support from the world-renowned John Hopkins University, Permata Pintar is unique in offering both elements, but has also surprised many with the speed of its establishment. John Hopkins admit that we are unique than the rest of the sites itself because for the fact that we not only use John Hopkins courses, but we build our own. John Hopkins has remarked to us that uh, they found this was the fastest you know, they work with so many uh, universities and people all over the world. They found ours came up, you know, in, in a very short time. We had the, the camp going, the school going. So they think it's also remarkable. If you look at the program offered by Columbia University, they have enrichment programs, but it's over the weekends. You look at John Hopkins, they have the summer programs for three weeks, but they don't have the school. You look at um, Indiana Gifted School, they have the school, but they don't have the enrichment programs. We look at the NUS, they have the school but no enrichment program. So, you know, we have sort of, we have, we have the whole set. Aside from the academic focus and acceleration programs, the students are actively encouraged to pursue extracurricular activities in order to become well-rounded. The facilities on offer are wide and varied, encompassing both indoor and outdoor. I'm the secretary of the student body and we do a lot of activities and I realised that I'm my leadership skills, I conduct activities better like I was from a girls school so I should feel shy here around guys but I feel that girl power, yeah, I don't feel that weak. <laughs> I choose theatre, theatre is so much fun, we have to act, yeah, the way like crying, like there's a lot of things in there. One of the main things is badminton because we have two courts in our uh, hall and then we have the carom, table tennis. Other than these activities, we have golf, equestrian, we have archery, kayaking. They are brought to Botanical Garden in our Kuala Lumpur. For my activities, I took horse riding. But sometimes when I have free time, I go gather with my friends, we'll go to the hall, we play badminton, have a great game, sweat a lot, and then we go back and study again, or we just sleep. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Or we just take a jog. In the evening, when we go back from school, we, can, we just normally change, and we, there's a park around our hostel, so we normally jog to the park, or jog around it, there's a lake there, the scenery, watch the sunset, it's very, very nice. The school holiday camp is a three-week residential program for gifted children between the ages of 9 to 15, allowing staff to identify and test future entrants for the full-time residential program. In the school holiday programs, we offered about uh, 18 courses, ranging from mathematics to science and technology to language. We have children who come here almost every year, so every time they come, they will choose one subject and then they will finish the whole, uh, the whole subjects in three weeks and then the next year when they come again, they get to pick another subject. But for our Pramata Pintar educational program, which is a fully residential program, uh, we only offer math, science and technology courses um, as, well, well, as well as the language and history and geographies and all that. But the emphasis is on math and science and technology. 
some of our students might be accelerated into the, the bachelor degree uh, program and then very short and then they get on to masters and PhD very quickly. Uh, the other one of course is we get them to do the international exams uh, to qualify for entry into American, British universities that are reputable. This school is very quite liberal. It's like you want to choose, you, you want to go US, there's, uh, you need to do SAT and TOEFL. I think that's the two. Then if you want to go UK, there's uh, IELTS and also O levels, A levels. The changes in the students after nine months has been remarkable and noticed by all, including the director of Permata Pinter, the parents and the students themselves. The parents in particular actively offer encouraging words of advice to future parents and children. I think all parents should uh, let the children to sit for this uh, UKM1 test and UKM if at all they have been given the opportunity I think they should grab the opportunity and let the children explore what is outside there let the children go and explore be innovative and they have been my since going there my daughter has been very independent she can even make decisions on her own my studies I realized that here we are definitely faster like for history, we finished the syllabus back in old school, just still chapter 5 or chapter 6. We finished the syllabus and I definitely learned more than what, like in old school history class, she comes in, reads the textbook. Here, the teachers makes us do assignments that is out of the textbook. So definitely I learned more, even though I don't like the subject history, but still I learned more. I learned more and I somehow began to like it. In my studies, well, the teachers here are a bit different. One thing, they are a bit younger, but they're experienced, so like we can then we can communicate with them easier, like relate to them lah. And then they are very fun. And then the way of teaching here is a bit different. Like in our old school, it's like always in the class, the teacher come open your textbooks. Hey, like okay, today you go to the library. Today you get in the court. Yeah, we're gonna play games. But while we play games, we still learn things, you know. So it's like very interesting. You won't fall asleep. You're like looking forward to every minute of it. At first, the teachers, they, they, the way they teach us, there are a lot of different from the way my former teachers uh, used to do. Like, we are very lucky to have some lecturers to teach us um, in English and also um, during the calculus class, we have um, lecturers from the university itself. And uh, it's just that they love to promote us to, to think. If in normal school, we would do SPM Bio, and here we are doing Advanced Placement Bio, AP Biology. So our textbook is the Campbell textbook, it's distic. And it's quite interesting because when we learn the normal one, we want to know more. We want to know why it's happening. So this is very helpful. And chemistry, we are doing the experiments here in more uh, individually. And we have smaller groups, like in our class, we have 17 to 18 people. So the studying progress is much more easier and teachers can concentrate on one student Maybe they have difficulties, they can pay more attention. Uh, the teacher is more experienced rather than others. Okay, so that I think that they are able to give me more input. Yeah, so that input the thing that I can get from books. Yeah, they help me how to study, how to understand this thing better. He's more responsible about his life. He's more responsible responsible about his uh, studies, and uh, I think he's more focused on his uh, futures. Uh, from the Pemata Pintar, what I see, my boy guided by the high people in terms of education, in terms of uh, experience, uh, to, be, uh, to be a good citizen in the Malaysia, like a professor, like a researcher, you see, from early stage. Since she's John, I think she's more mature. She has been given the opportunity to be more creative, more innovative. I think they have been given uh, uh, to express what they feel, uh, to do, uh, create something, be more, uh, how should I, uh, to be more, more, more explorative. We have uh, the Malay students, the Indian students, the Chinese students, and other ethnic groups living together in one place. It, it's a difficult thing to do, uh, but here they learn to tolerate each other. They learn to compromise. They learn to live among each other. And we have a concept called living learning community where they are responsible to each other's um, needs, uh, educational needs, emotional needs, so they help each other out. So this, make, this will make them a better leader in the future. It's just 116 of us, like, 
it's like turn left and right, you see the same face, and they're really nice. Even though we're from different, different places, I think that unites us. Like we get together and talk. Oh yeah, I used to do this back in my place. I used to do that in my place. Or really, and yeah, we we kind of bond really well because it's like really little of us. So yeah, it's really close. Everybody you can talk to. Yeah, it's like. And then the school numbers are small, only 116 of us. It's like everyone you know, all the teachers you know, like one big family. They can make friends very easy since they like to, <laughs> most of us here are very talkative. So having a chance to be friends with them, um, to get along with them, it's a very good opportunity because I just thought that the way they think and behave are quite different from my uh, people are. So. It's a good thing to learn and we could apply what we learn from them towards our life, in our life. I think I'm quite talkative and I'm quite friendly so it's not hard to find friends here because I, th I think everyone is uh, friendly here, it's, there's no selfishness, yeah, there's no such thing over here. Here every student are well behaved and they have social sk socialising skill where we, easy can t we can easily talk to them and they are open-minded. There's no one who's... We really practice zero indifference, where we don't care about their race, religion, or anything. We really make friends. We get through any, anyone. Almost everyone here is my friend. It's not almost, it's everyone here. Phase one of the campus was completed and opened for students in 2011. There are, however, many new developments scheduled for completion by the beginning of 2012 with phase two. New developments include classrooms, a laboratory, male and female hostels, a dining hall and lecturers' quarters, with longer-term plans for other facilities such as a swimming pool. Each child is given the freedom to advance at their own pace, ensuring they're always challenged and progressing according to their ability. Here at Pramata Pintar, we offer differentiated curriculums where children uh, has uh, the opportunity to learn independently and they are able to learn at their own pace. Everyone is free to do what they want. They can go at whatever pace they want. They don't have to restrict and hold back to what other people are doing. It's like, just because you're doing this, I have to do this too. But here it's like, if I want to do it, I do it. Like, um, I know a few of my friends who are like really, really smart. They don't have to hold back. Here it's like, I feel it's a closer relationship with the teacher because it's like just 17 students in the class really opens, opens up your mind, it's like whenever, if in my old school, like whenever you do, even though it's different, people make fun. But in this school, let's say if I'm different, I'm just, I'm just something weird, they don't laugh. They don't laugh at you, they, they support you. Even though they laugh also, they laugh for a good reason. It's either it's funny, but it's not, it's, they, they will, it's like not discriminating you, it's like they don't contradict you with themselves like they they will join you sometimes. Here you have more freedom to do what you want well as long as it's beneficial so I mean it's the freedom that's been given to me by the school. The teachers here are quite helpful they really like let's say for my the principal Dr. Noria right she helps a lot they say the teachers here are very very sociable and more friendly. What I think about this school is that uh, it gives you freedom in your education. When the teachers uh, know that the students have the ability to advance, to go more than um, other normal students, then they actually give us a chance to, um, let's say, that do the TOEFL faster than some other students, and maybe the SAT. And some of the students here also have the chance to actually fly overseas faster than other students. We actually offer them mainstream curriculum as well as international curriculum like SAT, O level, and A level. So in that sense, um, we give them the opportunity to actually pursue their first degree or the undergraduate program at an earlier age. If at the age of 16, they sit for their SAT and they perform very well in their SAT, and if they are able to get into any of the universities that they, they, they applied, they can go. And we will help them get the scholarship to go. Well, this school is specialised to give opportunity for students who are really qualified to go at a faster pace. At this age, we can see them for our SAT, and if we are really qualified, we can go to university by the earlier of next year. We are not only advancing in education, we are give, uh, here we are, we are improved in our EQ, talking skills, socialising, and other skills like co-curriculum activities. So here we have all. 
As the founder and patron of Permata Pintar, the First Lady of Malaysia, Datin Sri Rosma Mansur, plays an active role in the development of the programme. As a regular visitor to the school, she is also actively involved in promoting the school and encouraging countries worldwide to adopt a similar programme for their gifted children. The First Lady, uh, whenever she travels, she speaks about the programme. Uh, she also invites uh, children from the other countries to come and join us. Uh, last year we had from five countries. Uh, this year I think we have extended to the Middle East, uh, West Asia, uh, and also from the southern, the old Russian republics, you know, like Kazakhstan and so on. Um, I think some will be coming from there. I would like the children to be the best amongst the best not only for this country, uh, but also comparable to the best uh, or the best children um, throughout the world. And we already have the asset here. The chances of them producing something uh, spectacular, unusual, very innovative and creative may come from them. So let's, from the beginning, try to make them think along this line that they can do something different. Uh, that they could come up with things that are very original. By the time they leave the program, well, this is my hope. I have so many learning objectives that I wanted them to have as a takeaway from this program. But one of the biggest takeaways I hope they would take with them when they leave is that they become future leaders who are creative and innovative in whatever they do. I want them to be successful, I want them to be whatever they want, what the government wants them to be future scientists, which I hope they would want to be. Uh, but whatever they do, I want them to remember that they cannot just take whatever it is as it is. They have to think about how to innovate existing things, how to bring something to, to the betterment of the, 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 the public, how would they make life better for them and for the others. And that's what I want the takeaway for them when they finish our program. If we set the right path for them, inshallah, we hope that they would set the right path for the others in the near future.